some tense moments yesterday afternoon in an eastern Sioux Falls neighborhood. Armed officers were at an apartment complex near Arrowhead Parkway and Sycamore Avenue. According to police, they were trying to serve a warrant. Neighbors tell us they had to evacuate for hours while authorities surrounded the home in question. They've been here for over four hours, right? So since they've been over here for four hours, it's just like, like when can we go back? And as you can see, they have construction blocks on this side. So at the end of the day, people still do not know what to do. Police eventually made an arrest and people were returned to their homes. Authorities have not said who was arrested or why. Six people were able to walk away with only bumps and bruises after a crash in the Black Hills over the weekend. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office says a van lost its brakes coming down the hill near the Keystone Mall just before 3 o'clock local time Sunday afternoon. The driver tried to slow down by going into the ditch. You can see the van was on its side and the windshield was shattered. You can also see tracks in the grass of where the van went. Following more than three years of delays, a judge has decided the suspect in a deadly Sioux Falls crash is competent to stand trial. 26-year-old Tayton Stebbins faces numerous charges, including first-degree manslaughter and vehicular homicide. The charges stem from a crash May 8, 2021. Authorities say Stebbins was drunk, high on cocaine, and going more than 80 miles per hour on Arrowhead Parkway when he ran a red light and crashed into a car with four people inside. Two high school students died and two others were seriously hurt. Stebbins suffered a traumatic brain injury and has undergone extensive rehabilitation. He still claims he can't remember the crash. Following a pair of recent hearings involving several experts, the judge has determined that with proper accommodations, Stebbins will be able to assist in his own defense. The filing goes on to say that Stebbins is, quote, restored to competency. Now let's check in with meteorologist Scott Munt. Sounds like another day of sunshine out there, Scott. Yeah, nice to see that. Uh, temperatures today in the 70s and 80s for afternoon highs. Uh, there is that late day chance for shower or thunderstorm to show up across western South Dakota. Probably after 5 o'clock, we may see a stray thunder shower across western Kevoland. High temperature in Rapid City at 82, 83 in Pier, 79. Aberdeen will hit a high of 81 today in Sioux Falls. Brian will have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. Well, after nearly 20 inches of rain last week, things are finally starting to look normal in parts of Lincoln County. In Canton, the standing water is mostly gone. Roads are reopening and the bulk of the cleanup is almost complete. Lincoln County Emergency Manager Harold Timmerman says an event like this is hard to prepare for. Our city is trying to recover as best they can from what's happened with flooding in people's basements and so forth. And... Um, Townships and the county are trying to temporarily fix roads so they're passable, even though we can't bring them back to normal state for quite some time. The high school parking lot became the emergency drop-off site for people cleaning up their flooded homes. It will eventually be hauled away to the landfill. A number of parks along the River Greenway in Sioux Falls remain closed to the public following last week's rain and flooding. The water is receding, but more than a dozen parks are partially or completely closed, including Yankton Trail Park. The assistant director of Parks and Recreation says the process of reopening a park after a flood doesn't end with dry ground. We need to get inspections done to make sure that the spaces are safe, be it electrical inspections, bridge inspections, before we can fully open up. Give us some time to clean those up, make sure everything is safe. Just out of abundance of caution, we need to keep those bridges closed for now. Johnson says Tomar Park is a priority due to a tennis tournament scheduled to start on Friday. We provided a link showing which parks are currently open and which are closed under this story on Kelloland.com. Well, when there is bad weather in the forecast, like heavy rain and flooding, similar to what we had last week, many cities can take comfort in knowing they have mitigation plans in place to lessen the amount of damage. In Sioux Falls, the Parks and Trails system is part of the mitigation plan. Even though the recreational areas may receive damage after a flood, emergency manager Regan Smith says that's intentional so there's less damage to people and their properties. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, our weather forecast for today is pretty quiet, but tomorrow that's going to be changing. We have 
Thunderstorm outlooks here across most of Kettle Land. The risk of some severe weather returns to western Kettle Land. We had reports of nearly baseball size hail around Martin. Tennis ball size hail uh, just northeast of Wall. Some really rough weather with some of those cells last night. And I tell you what, we're in that time of year now too where we get another frontal system activated tomorrow and we could see more pockets of that kind of weather, which is obviously something we need to pay attention to. Today, high pressure center over North Dakota. That will help us out. It's already delivered in the drier air. It's not nearly as humid, but that story too begins to change tomorrow as we begin to pick up a stronger southeasterly wind. You'll notice on Futurecast here, we do have some thunderstorms. Now, some of these are going to fire up in the Black Hills initially along this trough of low pressure. And then what will happen here is that those will probably uh, develop in different clusters here, central eastern Kettle Land through daybreak tomorrow morning. The route of thunderstorms will likely be parallel to the warm front into northeast Nebraska, maybe a little bit of uh, northwest Iowa as well. And then this frontal system right there, we'll see if that instigates more severe weather in western South Dakota tomorrow afternoon. Eventually that system will slide east. We've got to keep those rain chances going at least into Friday. After that, the push of Canadian air comes back to the forecast, and that's going to set us up for some cooler weather for the weekend. We could have highs in the upper 60s. In Watertown, Sioux Falls, probably low to mid-70s, so not nearly as warm as uh, we see the last weekend in June upon us. 81 today, Sioux Falls were high. 79 in Mitchell. Today's forecast is basically mostly sunny and dry. We'll pick up those thunderstorms in the west tonight, and then again, the overnight picture will slowly move those east. I think Sioux Falls will probably end up spending most of the overnight dry. It might take very well until daybreak tomorrow morning to start to see that chance of rain. Tomorrow, the chance of rain is there. Our East River counties are cooler in the 70s. Look at Rapid and fill up close to 90 tomorrow. That'll fuel any big storm development out there in those areas of South Dakota. I do think Sioux Falls will carry on a chance of rain Thursday night into Friday. We're thinking, though, this front might keep clipping along here, and then hopefully Friday afternoon we lower the rain chance. Saturday, there is a small chance of something left over in the northwest flow out of uh, North Dakota and Montana, but I'm more inclined to say the big story there is just some wind out of the northwest and highs in the 70s. So uh, fair weather, we'll take it. Monday next week, well, there's already a 40% chance of thunderstorms, and that would probably be in the cycle, the return flow. So we'll see where that place is on the seven-day, but I'd Feel comfortable right now putting that on Monday. Also for Pier, there's some hotter weather attached to that feature because that's when the wind will come back around to the south early next week. So take in the, the break this weekend. I think we'll get it. Of course, your perspective in central and western South Dakota, you're not nearly as wet as Sioux Falls. So the thunderstorms here hopefully will not deliver too much in the way of flooding. But the severe weather is definitely a concern. Check out the details online at kettleland.com.